We're back, this is Dave Vellante, and this is day two of Oracle Open World. This is the data protection spotlight. Uh, each year at venues like Oracle Open World and, and VMworld, uh, with the help of our sponsors, we're able to come to these events and we do in-depth segments with technologists and practitioners to provide a perspective on a particular important topic. This uh, segment is sponsored by the EMC Backed Up and Recovery Division, a BRS group. Uh, I'm here with my co-host, John Furrier. And John, each year we, we, we drill into these segments and we start with just kind of an overview of what's going on in the marketplace. And so, welcome back. I want to kick it off here. <laughs> <laughs> I, I mean, Dave, Joe Tucci uh, gave the keynote here today uh, and uh, this morning, and it was fantastic, because Joe Tucci is a class act. Um, you know, we, we tweeted, you know, CEO of the decade, you know, he's never going to retire. He's having too much fun, as we always say. Uh, but it was really great to see him up there. And I always liked Joe Tucci because, you know, for future CEOs out there, what he does in these keynotes is fantastic. He says thank you to the customers. He respects the audience. And, uh, and then they went right into the demos. And they went right into, you talk about backup and recovery, they was a key part of the demo with Oracle. That's a big part of the themes here. And when you break down the, the technology, when you look at the virtualization and disruption, Backup and recovery is one of the core things that everyone's talking about because it's the low hanging fruit and it's very, very important. And data protection, backup and recovery, the entire gamut of, of kind of traditional data management is really, really core. This is where it's most effective. This is where the most action is. This is where people have the most questions are. And this is where the disruption is. So I'm excited. I think well, it's phenomenal. The, the thing about this morning, so I didn't realize that Joe Tucci and Safra Katz were such good friends. They were sort of buddy-buddy on stage. And, and so that's cool. I tweeted out that uh, I'm sure it gets a little, little more heated in the field. Uh, but nonetheless, the bottom line is the market's $2 trillion. And so, large companies can participate. We live in a world of cooperation, as they say. So let's kick off this, this deep dive, this segment into data protection. You, know, you can see we're going to have a, a, a number of slides that we'll, we'll move along with. So we're going to talk about data protection going IT as a service. We've been talking about this theme, John, for quite some time, but I want to start with the, the first slide, the four mega forces uh, that we talk about a lot, cloud, mobile, social, big data. Talk about what those mean for, for data protection. Uh, and specifically, you can see underneath the slide we have security, privacy, and trust. John, with the, the, the whole issue around the NSA and PRISM, customers, especially those looking at the cloud, are much more sensitized to, to uh, uh, privacy and security issues which fall under the rubric of data uh, protection. So we think about cloud, you know, a lot of people think about the cloud as a, as a backup target, but increasingly, you know, there's real concern over uh, privacy and security, as I just mentioned. So what people are trying to do, John, is they're trying to essentially replicate the cloud-like simplicity and capability within their own data centers on premise. So that's where data protection as a service really comes into play. Add to that mobile, we are trying to push data out to the edge. Social, driving all kinds of new types of data, and that leads to, to big data. The big data explosion has completely changed the way in which people have looked at backup because it has put pressure on backup windows in a way that People were going unprotected, and many still are. They're not able to meet their backup windows. They're not able to actually protect their data. So this is a big issue, John. I mean, you know, it's one of those, those areas that doesn't get enough attention. Yeah, you know, one of the things that came up yesterday, Gary Bloom was on, who was a longtime Oracle exec. He said, you know, when he was at Oracle, he's now the CEO of MarkLogic, he said, you know, the data that is stored out there is not all in a relational database, and, and the cloud mobile, social, uh, big data chart you just put up really highlights the fact that security isn't a pillar, it's a, it's a horizontal strategy across all those different forces, and the fact that you have now new data types, it still is a new challenge, but yet an opportunity. At the same time, you have to capture that on top of the legacy legacy infrastructure. So this is where the technology is really impacting. So to me, Dave, that's the focus area that I think is the most active right now. Yeah, now, so on the next slide, I want to talk about some of the Oracle market forces. Um, you know, as I said, the data is exploding, everybody knows that. 90% of the world's data, John, was created in the last 24 months. So you're, you're seeing this just exponential curve in data, everybody knows about that. But the other stat that I want to put out there is the average enterprise application is almost two decades old. You're talking about 19 year old applications on average. So the point is that backup has to transform, and it is transforming. Wikibon just published the study talking about uh, virtualization adoption within, a, within Oracle environments. The, the number that we have is it's over 50% now of, of Oracle shops are, are virtualized for production apps. This comes out of Wikibon data, and it's confirmed by the independent Oracle users group. Now when you talk about DBAs and data protection, 
there's a lot of different approaches for Oracle data protection, but the one that really matters in our, is RMAN. In production applications, RMAN is it. It's the best practice, it's the, the you know, main API for, for Oracle DBAs. And the last point I wanted to make here is the tape is being repositioned. John, we heard Jeremy Burton today talk about <laughs> tape. Uh, he said the only time we talk about tape is when we say tape sucks. Uh, but the reality is there's still a lot of tape out there. He actually said tape sucks, so yeah, that was interesting that I found it's, that. The reality is there's still a lot of tape out there, but it's being repositioned as the, the last resort. Yes, it's in, a, it's in a deep vault somewhere on tape. Uh, hopefully we never have to get it back. Um, and of course, because we know that that transformation occurred uh, largely because deduplication changed the economics of disk-based backup, and because most recoveries happen on rel relatively fresh data, you want that to happen on disk. So those are some of the big Oracle forces that we see. In the next slide, we talk about some of the transformations that are going on within Oracle, and there's really four that we talk about. IT transformation is driving data protection as a service. We talked about that before. And that really ties into Oracle's database as a service. We heard Thomas Curian this morning talking about Oracle's cloud strategy, talking about database as a service. That's where Oracle customers want to go. So what does that mean for the DBA? That means the DBA and the application heads get a simplified menu. When you talk about uh, data protection as a service, it's a simplified menu with more granularity that they can dial up or dial down, i.e service levels, dial up or dial down service levels, based on the application requirements, based on the value of the application, the recovery point objectives and the recovery time objectives of those individual applications versus having a one size fits all. And the last point I want to make here, John, is there's an organizational balance between giving the DBAs control over their ability to do that and manage these things like backup versus having somebody who's intensely focused on the backup requirements, and that would be the storage administrator or the backup administrator. So, I think Dave, I mean, one of the things that you pointed out is this transformation message is a high level message for EMC, but also the database as a service. And one of the most important things that's happening in a trend at a personnel organizational level is that the DBA role is changing very, very rapidly. So in the Oracle environment, this is where it's most impacted. It's not, going away, so I disagree with Gary Bloom on this point, it's not going away, it's shifting to more of them in importance. So you, you bring up the, the balance question, that's an integration of two major roles, that is the, the traditional DBA and the guy who's hardcore about data loss, whose job is to make sure nothing gets lost. Now those are going to roll, roll together. You add in data science and then chief data officer kind of mindset, you're talking about a whole new opportunity for people to translate their current DBA and analyst role into new positions. To me, I think this is going to be one of the most important battlegrounds for the job market because this is where it's going to move right up, the, up to the CIO level of visibility and I think data protection and databases of service is really, really a big deal. Now the last point I want to make, you see on this uh, last slide, we got seven Oracle customer imperatives. I'll go through them quickly because we don't have much time. Uh, but really you want to move toward backup uh, and recovery as a service. We've talked a lot about data protection being, being broken or backup being broken. Data protection as a service is a fix. Uh, it's clearly a trend that as part of an IT service catalog, you really want to include backup in there, not as a bolt on or an afterthought, but it's a fundamental part of your, your application strategy. And then the other point is, I've said, if I said this once, John, I've said it a thousand times, backup is one thing, recovery is everything. You got to test recovery, test, 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 test it frequently. Um, Oracle's got a go bunch of golden rules around backup and recovery. It relates to separating backup data and files and recovery metadata and the like, and, and physically separating the media and the RAID devices and the volumes and the file systems. So those are things that you can do to just create added levels of, of protection. Uh, you want to think about virtualization, with virtualization on the rise, you know, initially uh, Oracle was very negative uh, outwardly toward things like VMware, but I think Oracle's realized that it's got to embrace VMware. I was at a session yesterday, the executives were saying they are moving toward uh, uh, embracing VMware. They're going to be making some announcements in that, that direction, so I think Oracle has realized that you know, VMware and virtualization, other than just OVM, Oracle Virtual Machine, is actually a trend that's going to occur. So you got to consider the impacts on backup. And that really talks to simplifying. You want to simplify the environment. People want to get to cloud-like simplicity. Uh, having said that, our man is the most viable option for production apps. And then some other things, like you want to really want to do uh, uh, best practice, like keeping the most uh, uh, current data on disk. Most restores, 90% of restores are from data that's less than 24 hours old. You want to keep those redo logs on disk so that you can recover quickly. Uh, and then get your applications up. That's what it's all about. 
thinking about the application head and the DBA, they, uh, they care about service levels, they care about performance, they care about availability. You know, cost is frankly secondary to those guys, so these are things that, that drive ROI, maybe not in terms of printing money, but in terms of not losing money, because backup is really insurance. So John, that really concludes sort of the, the, the backup segment. I'll give you the final, final word on this. Yeah, when we look at all the, uh, the data, Dave, when we, all the different opportunities, we go to the cube, we go out to all the events, extract the ceiling from the noise, as we say. The one thing that I noticed at VMworld, and going back for the past year, the impact of software-defined data center, software-defined networking, whatever you want to call it, all the major trends all knocking down the low-hanging fruit, that's backup and recovery, backup and the recovery piece. Virtualization is a core enabler, and you look at an environment like Oracle who's going fully red stack, and the stuff that they're doing on a Oracle engineered system, this is more important than ever. So, to me, I think you're going to see very, very quickly um, a complete uh, enablement of a modern backup and recovery data protection uh, service, one, two, and then, new markets where there's new data types coming in. Joe Tucci talked about fast data, again, love that. This is what's happening. Machine to machine exhaust data. This has to be dealt with and stored. So I think you're going to see the software defined data center really be defined by the, the first disaster recovery, backup and recovery. These are the solutions that are the low hanging fruits are getting the first service and this is what's, what's exciting, Dave. All right, John, thanks very much for sitting in and uh, helping me out with this uh, backup and recovery deep dive. That's the first segment. We're going three more segments now. We're going we're gonna to dig in. Guy Churchwood is here. He's the president of the EMC BRS division, and Stephen Manley, who's the CTO. We're going to unpack what's happening in backup, what's specifically happening in Oracle, uh, uh, and, and, and how these guys are sort of attacking that problem. So keep it right here. This is Dave Vellante with John Furrier. This is theCUBE. We'll be right back after this. <laughs>